Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Voices by Corey and Zinzinix. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the New Grounds Podcast. I am your host, Voices by Corey, and I am joined by Zin Zinix. Say hi, Zin. Oh, hi, Zin. <laughs> Are you excited for today, dude? Dude, I'm shaking. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. The, the bigger question is, are you awake? Because normally we're night owls and we record at night. So it's like bright and early for me. It's like 9 a.m. I actually woke up at 4 a.m. this morning for work. How are you doing right now? Have you gotten your coffee, your caffeine? Have you? Do you have a full tummy full of yummy breakfast? Why are you talking to me like that? We're normal human beings, Corey. Just talk to me normally like you normally do. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm trying to do a setup, Zen. I went to bed at like 2 in the morning because people in the server like to draw until like 1 in the morning. So like we've been hanging out until late in the hours. I woke up at 7. I think I was so nervous for this interview that I woke up at 7. <laughs> also, Corey, Corey, can I start this episode off with some like new grounds news? Like yeah, for sure, man. Just just real quick, New Grounds news. All right. So, Phantom Arcade hosted a Twitter space recently, and Rebecca Doodles announced that her FNF mod, The Starving Artist, actually got so much reception that Nike ended up DMing her via Twitter or however they DMed her. Like what? She, Nike contacted Rebecca Doodles, who also, Rebecca Doodles credited for bringing back Pecan Joe because she's the owner of the server. She got hit up by Nike for her FNF mod, Starving Artist. So... Just a real quick recap on that. I could go into detail how FNF has opened the door for a lot of new grounds creators to create content and get noticed. You know what I mean? And especially it's kind of relevant, the fact that it's called Starving Artist and she was looking for more recognition and she found it through something that new grounds made. So pretty cool. XTIL, That's who's awesome. also RTIL. XTIL is like the shit post version of RTIL. Does a bunch <laughs> of a bunch of like kind of meme almost like social, like, just shit post shit. Our XTIL is back with P- Pecan Joe Lives. That's on the front page. You can catch that. It's nice seeing RTIL have fun back in the Newgrounds community because after his like seven year hiatus coming back to Newgrounds, and it just seems like he's been on the up and up and enjoying himself. So it's kind of nice. I was going to say, it looks like he's been enjoying himself since uh, returning. Yeah, Newgrounds, very healthy place. Good for your mental health. Adlam, Adlam, Absolutely. Adlam reached one thousand fans you know how we love Adlam. matter of fact Adlam, oh yeah Adlam recently featured in one of lazy muffins animations as a voice actor it was pretty cool too um should we get gooseworks on the podcast thought about that yesterday that's a good question i like gooseworks uh razor draw shout Ooh. out to razor draws for the midsummer rumble it's been going great uh, i see james lee like all the art that's came out for the tarboy day for midsummer rumble it's just been a great time for artists on new grounds to just to pay homage to all the characters that are fun to draw and then Tay 6 a.m which is a pecan joe game originally handled by prosciutto man has been handed off to stepford and the soundtrack by terravex has been out for a while now i suggest streaming it like i did you can find it on youtube music spotify etc and it's a badass soundtrack that's pretty much does it for me also fnf jam announced and has not announced the winners yet i wonder when the hell that's gonna happen so well as far as we know they've looked at the submissions they did a live stream so hopefully they've come to a, a conclusion on who they want to announce as their winner so hopefully we see that soon yes 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 and, and then i i've been looking at all your art for the um uh for the midsummer rumble and they're freaking awesome man you're doing a great job oh i appreciate that i, I like doing the ideas like the latest one was skid and pump and skid cracks pump over yes. the, the baseball bat and eats his guts because you know it's, <laughs> that was so good pumpkin. that was so good he's made it zen got better thank you mk mafo i love you you're awesome you're cool my friends <laughs> my friends are here i'm excited <laughs> also don't don't read ninja muffin's latest news post about the uh pending lawsuit that he has against isaac <laughs> i'm just <kidding>. oh jeez. <laughs> it's they well <laughs> I'm ser- like it's, I think it's still his news post, and it's about uh, my lawyers have told me not to say anything more about the, about the situation with Kawhi Sprite. So it's pretty cool. 
I mean, it sounds funny, but what if it's just real? completely feuding? What if it's I real? hope it's not. I hope it's not. <laughs> Yeehaw! You got well. You know, in your in your little news update, you you mentioned somebody who uh, is very important for today's show. Uh, you mentioned uh, Lazy Muffin, Mr. Yotam Perel. We actually have him in. Yeah, we actually have him on the episode today, and we are thrilled. I know Zin and I are both kind of nervous because we love his work a lot. <laughs> but uh, Yo Tom, how you doing, man? Say hey, hello to guys. the New Grounds podcast fans. Hey everyone, that was an impressive amount of news to rattle off. Dang! Yeah. Oh, thank you. Good job. <laughs> uh, there, there's been a lot of happenings on on New Grounds lately, so it was kind of necessary to do so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, at least, Nike at least we believe emailing, so. like getting in people's DMs. Oh, Dang, la- cool. Lazy Muffin, the the creator of the soundtrack for Friday Night Funkin' Kawaii Sprite, he got hit up by Capitol Records. Like a lot of labels keep coming at him too. It's people are trying to latch onto this, and and get a piece of that pie. It's it's good. <laughs> he said good because we're all like <laughs> good. technically a part of the pie. I feel like like everyone who's on New Grounds. Yeah, I like that idea. I'm I'm okay. I'm a little sick. I want to warn everyone. I I get I get like little shivers, and my throat sucks. But I'm here to have a, a glorious time with you guys. Yeah, just if you if you see Lazy Muffin, just wave at him. Do do not approach. I repeat, do not approach. He will sneeze all over you. <laughs> <laughs> like his his profile picture is pretty standard for how he's feeling right now. Just a lot. Lots of green phlegm coming out of his mm-hmm. out, out of his throat and just covering the screen. So it will happen to you guys. So just keep your distance. You know, it's it's not just because he doesn't like you. It's just because he doesn't want to get you sick. So yeah, stay away from me, <laughs> creeps. <laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> That's funny. So so yo Tom, we're we're really happy to have you on the show. Um, you know, before we went live, we were talking about one of our. Uh, previous host, Will, he told us uh, he reached out to you a while ago and uh, you kind of, you know, tossed him to the side and said, fuck you, dude. So, Sounds like me. <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> I thought, it, you know, I thought, why not try it, th- you know, this time around and see if Yotam would be interested in coming on the podcast. And, you know, I was pleasantly surprised when you said yes. So, you know, I, I it, it is pretty much a, an honor because you are you've been on Newgrounds for quite some time man and you have been pumping out content left and right entertaining people you know for shoot how many 18, years now 18 like, 18 years have, 18 years i Holy mean the first cow. few years weren't very entertaining but they they exist they're up there on Newgrounds <laughs> they're sick fights i mean that's Newgrounds right oh yeah Oh yeah, that is very much new ground. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Yesterday, I watched Break Dancing Stick Figure, and it, it, I laughed like mm. it was <laughs> it was pretty freaking funny. <laughs> it yeah, was it's like... one of my best creations. <laughs> sure. Well, it, it's funny because you know we we love to do our research because it's we get to watch a bunch of animations. So looking back on some of the earlier submissions, you know, one of the I think one of the very first. Uh, animations i ever saw from you was your uh your meet and fuck animation and it made me laugh so hard because back in 2008 when that released you know i'm still a teenager and meet and fuck was still blowing up on new grounds and of course being young men we played that game for you know you know informational so purposes that game. <laughs> i'm doing it for research <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but that that animation makes me laugh so hard because it was just a in true encapsulation of you know what the game is all about, especially like the little moans. The little moans make me laugh so hard. Like, huh? <laughs> it's just so good, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's a pleasure to see to just to have you on here and knowing the history that you have with um, the website is awesome, man. So thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for waking up early in order to accommodate yeah, me. Yeah, no problem. And you know, that's what that's what we do for the, for our guests. We like to make sure that you're comfortable. You know, especially you know with your, you know, you being sick. We want to make sure that you're, you get to lay in bed and you know you, you got your you, you get your you get your uh, chicken broth uh, soup and you know get some sprite. Oh man, I made the that. worst soup yesterday. <laughs> I tried to like make a good healthy soup. It just so bad. Just as like salt, salt water. water. <laughs> um, if it if it came to Tom, if Tom fought right now was like, hey, can I can I be interviewed by you guys? But like, no, wait, hold on. We got lazy muffin. Like literally a part of my child, and he's <laughs> sick. sick. It's like two two pluses. Here we go. We get him. 
<laughs> he might be gone now, tomorrow. Uh, here's a good question. When people, <laughs> when you talk to people, what is the most memorable moment from them for you? Like we talked about the meet and fuck episode they did. Cause I do, I remember that like very profoundly from my childhood when I was like 13, like watching that. What do people remember from you the most? Do you think? Hmm. I feel like a lot of people that stuck around for a while do really like like the birthday series because it's like one thing that's still ongoing. Like uh, every year I do a birthday song and post it on my birthday, which is in two days from now. So there's going to be a new animation soon. Yay! That's something. That's cool. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I was looking and, for your videos because uh, I, think, I think you said something that you were 30 and, already. And I was <laughs> like, where's the 30? Where's the 30 movie? I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. No, I like to say I'm 30, like, before I'm 30. I like, once I turn 30, I'm going to say I'm 31. <laughs> it's just a way to deal with aging. <laughs> and I think a lot of people uh, connected to Nameless in, uh, in, in some ways. Because it is a very weird, like, shit posty animation that turned sentimental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, but it's generally not, like, one thing. It's just, like, the fact that I make stuff and sort of... Uh, consistent, semi-consistent. Yeah. Now, your first, the first birthday animation you ever did was at sixteen. Like that's such a young age to be animating. At fifteen, I think it wasn't a song one though. It was just me like crying at a table <laughs> or something. <laughs> I think it might have it might have been like a DeviantArt exclusive because sometimes I felt more comfortable like posting shittier stuff to DeviantArt than okay, to Newgrounds. Okay, that makes sense. This is the last sentiment we posted yeah. like completed works on new grounds. Yeah, because I noticed like your first birthday one on new grounds was in 2007, and it's, you got a guitar in it. You know, it's like what I remember from my childhood watching mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, so it's such a young age to be posting animation and and to have a style that is recognizable. Like where did that where did that style come from? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I feel like I was like just inspired by other creators. Uh, online mostly like a uh, team from mayor from Newground squeezy do you guys remember that that guy who took a german guy who made like pretty nuts animations i remember like one of his halloween animations he made like for one of the competitions was like this weird cartoon about like a bad lsd trip <laughs> i don't know i really liked his stuff and i think i probably ripped him off a bunch <laughs> but I know. I feel like new, early Newgrounds is a lot of just like people reaping each other off, to like yeah, in inspiring nice way. each other. Yeah, just using other people's content to inspire <laughs> them to basically create their own original content, if anything. And then maybe collab. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess. I guess we we should start off at yeah. the beginning because I feel like that's just where we're at right now. It's the beginning. And what what? How do you explain albino black sheep? Because I visited the website like twice when I was little, and I was like. I was like, I kind of like Newgrounds a little better. I wasn't sure like how to feel about al albino black sheep. That was like the only place I knew to find more of your animations. It was like where I would have to go is what it felt like. I'm not sure how to explain it. It's just, it's not like a, an open portal. It's more of like one guy who asks you, hey, can you send me this animation? I'll put it up. And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and we've been like, I don't know. I've been sending you my stuff for like decades now. Is this, wait, but, is uh, it still up? I didn't do that kind of research. Is it still I up? I believe it is. Oh wow, that's oh cool. God. I still send it over. I still try to like support the main sites who, you know, supported me. Like Newgrounds and Albino Black Sheep both like were my first sponsorships for uh, like Nameless Five, I think, or six. I'm not sure. But yeah, that was like my first making money from my own tunes kind of experience when I was like 15, maybe. That's wild. That's wild. Why animation? Why? Like why? Like, why? Uh, I think I was a very anxious little kid. I didn't know what to do with my time. And then, like, I figured I'd enjoy animation, and that takes a ton of time. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, like, kind of a good fit as far as, like, keeping me busy with myself, but also, like, having a nice uh, something at the end, like a product or something that I enjoy putting out. And uh, I don't know. I've just been doing it for my entire life, so I can't really see anything else like imagine me doing anything else so i just kind of i don't know as soon as i managed to garner some sort of audience and they seem to be sticking with me more or less i was like okay i'll just keep doing this until i can't <laughs> until i can and your music your music's really caught on. i checked your band camp out yesterday and it seems like people oh, thank really you. support your music I, I enjoy your music i feel like that's a uh, 
strong component of a lot of your animations. It's the fact that yeah, I feel like I don't know. Kind of my goal is to be my own little production house because I'm very bad with working with others, <laughs> or at least like I don't have the I don't have the drive to work with others, <laughs> which is not probably not a great thing. But being able to like record the voices on my own and do the music and do the animation, it's like it's something I enjoy. I just enjoy, I'm a control freak, probably. <laughs> probably control freak, little antisocial. I animate to keep the voices away in my head. That's what <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much. Now, it. now, would you it. say the birthday songs like were your first attempt at trying to write music, or were you writing music way like way before that? Huh, no, no, I, I haven't thought about that. But yeah, that those are probably my first few songs that I ever wrote. Yeah, like. I don't know, even wrote like a one million page view song for DeviantArt, but yeah, I'm guessing those were probably my first songs that I actually tried to write that weren't like more serious that I started to write later on. That's cool, man. I, I that that's one of the yeah. things I love yeah. about oh. you know just creating your own stuff. Like it's basically encouraged you to try a different avenue, at uh, try different avenues. You know, you first try your hand with, you know, stick animations and then you evolve into you know, actual human type characters and then it leads you into wanting to create music for your animations. You know, it's just like stepping stones for doing what you want to do in, you know, to blossom as an artist. So it's really cool. Like it's and and kind of like evolving on that question a little bit more, like ultimately what made you want to come to Newgrounds? Was it just the the fact that you wanted to put your stuff out there or was it just here's a site that, you know, a lot of people you know, watch animations and play games on. Let me let me just throw it up there and see what happens. I mean, I was like very young when I I was like thirteen when I posted my first animation up there, and like my older brother, who's like three years older than me, like pretty much taught me the basics of Macromedia Flash, and then I I yeah, it was just like the only place you can freely upload like attuned to <laughs> there weren't many many other avenues to like get anyone's eyes on just like the dumb shit you create as a little kid your wait your older brother showed you what macromedia flash was yeah he like taught me the basics pretty much like oh that's a tween these are frames uh, have fun he thought it was he harmless. also made a few tunes he oh okay is he on Newgrounds as well i wonder i wonder if he like I, it, it, <laughs> He wouldn't want anyone to see his stuff. That that I'm sure of. <laughs> of course, of course. But I, I gotta know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think he's like. It's just active. it's just interesting to see how you made a whole career out of it after your older brother showed you it. He's like, oh, this is probably be harmless enough. Turns out your whole life revolves around just learning Flash and doing animations. Yeah, he and, really like. Uh, it just makes me. me wonder, like, what did he get into, like, after that, or did? Does he see your animations and think, oh, that's still cool? Or is he like, damn, dude, why wasn't Yo Tam go to college and become a doctor by now? Like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> no, he loves my stuff. We write a bunch of stuff together. Like, when, whenever I get, like, a more serious project where they require a script, <laughs> I usually, like, write it down with him. And, like, no, we work great together. That's Very beautiful. proud of each other. <laughs> I guess, what was your reception like in the in the early Newgrounds days? What was it, what was it like being on Newgrounds early? I don't I don't know if you want to describe it as like blowing up, but I would have to say that your animations back when Newgrounds was popping off had to have been some of the most memorable moments for a lot of us growing up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember like my first front page animation was like Do Me, which was like a Richard Cheese song, like a little skit that he did. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and it got on the front page and I was like, "Dang, that's cool." But I don't know, I'm kind of a I'm a guy who has an issue expressing or feeling like heightened emotions of like uh, excitement. So like I usually like get a great thing, like something great happens. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. And then I move on completely. <laughs> and, like, I, I'm not very good at like basking in and being like, heck yeah, let's party. This is great. <laughs> but it, but it, it was it was nice having an audience. It was like I just, I don't know. I spent most of my like teen years just on like talking to weirdos on the internet, which is <laughs> a lovely thing, I think. Yeah, which is what you're doing now. We're I was just saying. I was gonna say yeah. you're still doing it till this day. <laughs> Brilliant. 
you, <laughs> I like you get a bunch of fame and they're like, yeah, all right, I'm just gonna go write a birthday song alone in my room now. <laughs> like that's that's the course of Lazy <laughs> yeah, Muffin. yeah, pretty much. That's the course of Lazy Muffin. Um, so you originally started off doing stick figure fights and then you eventually morphed into like your own style. Started doing a lot of comedy, a lot of social satire. I mean, Cripple Boy and Chocolate Boy. Chocolate Man are <laughs> some of the most iconic characters in there. They're also, just like the raunchiest kind of comedy that there is, there's like a quadriplegic, abusive cripple boy who, <laughs> I, who hangs himself in one episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that happened because my voice changed and I was too embarrassed to try and record him again. <laughs> so, I'm just going to kill like, him off. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much it. I was like, well, I'm killing him off. I can't do his voice anymore. Then I was like, wait, no, I can still. It's okay. <laughs> I like pretty much took it back. I was like, never mind. But then there was like a whole arc of like Chocolate Man going to like heaven and hell to like get him free. It was I try to make sense of it within the world. Within the world. <laughs> um, so like ultimately, how did you come up with Cripple Boy and, and Chocolate Man? Because of course the characters are really out there. I mean, Chocolate Man is kind of a, a simple concept, just a you know. Mm -hmm. a brown guy so how how did, how did you ultimately come up with the idea for them i have no idea <laughs> it's not like i don't know i feel like with those early shorts i never like sat down and thought things through would julie just like try and make things try to record them and it's like especially when like one side is me rec like recorded me and one side is like speakonia like that text-to-speech program that text-to-speech program yeah, it allows you to like I don't know, change things up a little bit. I have no idea what I, I have no recollection of coming up with these characters. I probably just drew them and was like, huh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that. This suits me. This works. Yeah. Now, okay. So, what is RWD? I don't think I've ever found out what that acronym stands for, or did at one point. And it's I lost. radical wrongdoers. Radical wrongdoers. So there's RWD and lazy writing. In your, your early days, I think we're just kind of like a, I don't want to say serious, but just something that made you put out even more work. Could you, could you describe lazy writing and RWD for people like who don't know what it is? Let's see. What did I post under RWD? It's like there's the Halloween sure. 07, mm -hmm. RWD yeah. 001, RWD 003. It's just like a bunch of like right basically i think with rwd we just like got a bunch of animation buds and try to like you know form one of those i don't know what you would call what, it like clock crew you know like yeah pretty much but just like more exclusive i guess i don't know but and lazy writing was i, th I remember that like the main premise of it was just like you're not gonna think about this too hard <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna it's, it's just it's more so maybe improvised like maybe before before that, I would still try and write a little more, like especially with, with the more serious shorts, like uh, Dangers of Halloween and stuff like that. But lazy writing was just like, uh, which sort of like set the way I write things till this day, which is just have a basic idea for a joke and try to improvise shit around it. I don't usually like sit down and write scripts. Now, is that, like, your animation technique for the most part? You, you just ad-lib everything and then kind of have fun with the animation? Is that how you push stuff out? Yeah. Make it much. fun? Yeah, I, I feel like, I don't know, I love shows like home movies where there's, like, a improvisational sense about it. Yeah. Like, the way character characters talk and, like, talk over each other and riff. And I'm basically trying to riff with myself. That's the the idea, sort of. And, and like you, you get that sense when um, you know you watch uh, Yotam and Fantasia. I I know that there's a couple of the episodes that are mostly improvised, and like one of my favorite episodes is when it's you and Max, Max Gallardi, who's a <laughs> yeah. hot diggity demon. You guys just riff uh, and talking about how um, Fantasia has a sister named Fantasia, and you guys just riff for a good couple minutes, and it's beyond hilarious the stuff that you come up with and max can't even keep a a straight face he just laughs throughout the entire thing <laughs> and surprisingly I you're just one, very yeah. very calm and neutral and I, I i really love that writing aspect for your animations it, it does transfer into um in a lot of your animations and it's it's a unique type of feel to writing it doesn't feel like it's forced it does feel natural and it's 
kind of like conversations that normal people would have instead of like, you know, drawing out a whole script that's five pages long and the dialogue is very, you know, A, B, C, D, whereas your conversations in your episodes is stuff that, you know, people would probably say to one another in a daily conversation. And that's what that's I feel like the the genuine uniqueness of your I, I feel like that genuine uniqueness makes your your cartoon stand out more than anybody else's. So I, as a fan, I really appreciate just, um, you know, being able to riff like that and come up with stuff on the spot. Thank you. It's very yeah. sweet of you to say. Oh, yeah. I try. I, I try to be sweet. <laughs> as a, I am a little are. bit tired at times, though. <laughs> as, a, as a fan, I like how I can get your personality from any one of your animations. Like, it feels like I'm in that little conversation headspace that that you are in when you're doing an animation because it's just so relaxed. And it's like, okay, I get kind of what where Lazy Muffin's coming from and all these, like, little silly videos. I think, like, I also f- animate myself as, like, the main guy. Yeah, it's, it's like a self-insert. <laughs> which yeah. probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, very blatant <laughs> self-insert. That's great. Now, how do you compare, like, your early YouTube days to like contemporary youtube now because i i've looked at your youtube page and i've seen like a lot of your older animations have like millions of views and then nowadays it's different you know it's i don't understand how the animation market works as clearly as someone like you does who's been doing it for 18 years i mean it's i think it's mainly like the you know basic algorithm change of like 2016 17 of like just youtube preferring longer content than two like short content which is most of animation and i just i i just didn't like evolve with it <laughs> i'm very stubborn of like no i'm not gonna make like a like a story time animation i've considered it many times but i'm very stubborn about it and like it on a feeling like trying to please the algorithm it's a very dirty feeling <laughs> that i don't <laughs> like i still try and do it sometimes but generally I just, I don't know, I feel like I just like making dumb shorts that uh, probably aren't going to get a ton of views, but I don't know, having things like Patreon and stuff like that very much helps like cement the fact that it's not, I'm not just making it at a, at a loss for nothing. Like, I, I feel you, yeah, like it's, it, and I noticed that from a, a bunch of different animators who, you know, were frequent flyers on Newgrounds, like you saw it with, um, you know, uh, I think it was... Chris O'Neill, Psychic Pebbles, Stamper, a lot of those, uh, even uh, Eagle Raptor, they kind of transitioned away from even using YouTube as a platform to showcase their stuff because, like you said, the algorithm changed and supported longer videos instead of short videos, which ultimately kills animators. So, yeah, like you hate to see it, but at least you have people who stuck to their guns and love to create these little shorts. And thankfully, there's still the platform of Newgrounds where you can post that stuff up there. And Patreon mm-hmm. e- even being a, an, an even better platform because you can still put that stuff out there and people would want to see you, you know, they still want to see you put that content out there. And on top of that, they're supporting you and allowing you to continue living your dream the way that YouTube kind of just try to crush everyone's dream. <laughs> <laughs> they're a little bit dicks. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think... I think I'm also just very stubborn. I, I feel like I could try to to oh, work come on. it. But just I'm, do uh, the just think meme, okay? And it's to. like it's something you believe in, right? <laughs> it just gotta be culturally significant. Like, oh, the just think meme was everywhere because of Invincible. Now you can do it in your style, right? You just like you yell and get Fantasia for fucking not doing the dishes or something, and then you <laughs> you beat her to death. <laughs> you go to the classic one of the fights. classic fights. <laughs> it's just, that's see, that's the problem with the animation, right? Because it, it has to be fun for you. Otherwise, it's just a fucking chore, and you don't want to placate to any kind of audience. You just want to do what you want to do. Like, why, why not? Oh, because I don't get enough views. Because I have to play to an algorithm. That that market is really difficult to survive in. And yeah, and I don't. I, I like discovered that people think of like YouTube ideas first of all based on title and the thumbnail, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh God. Like, exactly. I, I don't know. I can't imagine trying to trying to make a clickbaity thumbnail. It feels bad. Trust me, it feels real bad. We do that. I was say you you love doing those, Zim. I don't love doing that. <laughs> but also, no one cares. Everyone's okay with it. It's fine. Like, but I don't know. The audience usually never cares. 
when I do do something that's more like I don't know, did like a movie review thing that I genuinely enjoy doing. It did it because I felt like okay, I got something to say about this. I feel like it's just super hard on YouTube to try and cover things that aren't covered to death. That's like my main thing with like finding yeah. funny things. I to saw talk you do a Philip DeFranco marathon do. too. I was like, <laughs> yeah. That was fun, but that was just me, basically, yeah, yeah just put, <laughs> taking out my anger, <laughs> my YouTube anger on one guy. <laughs> Perfect. It has to go somewhere, otherwise you'll just make a really angry animation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll go back to stick fights. Fuck back all this. Let's fights. go back, back to our roots. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, we got all these shows that you worked on. Uh, 2014, you worked on Trip Tank. Like that's pretty, it's pretty. Yeah, that was cool. It's pretty big. They basically licensed one of my existing tunes, a lazy writing one, which I think was an exclusive licensing deal. So I'm pretty sure I, yeah, it's not online anywhere. Like the one, it was like a doctor's visit, and he was like, uh, I don't remember the gag. It was something about head, shoulders, knees, and toes, about like his, their son getting hurt. <laughs> so there was like one short that got uh, licensed, and they also like commissioned me for another short called Peace Slide, which I it's probably up on YouTube somewhere. I have no idea, but I think it's a fun one, dumb fun little one. I think um, Aaron Long, who works on BoJack Horseman, also Sublo and Taking Mustard mm-hmm. on Newgrounds, if you know what that is. Um, he mentioned yeah. that. A lot of Trip Tank shorts are on YouTube, but a lot of them aren't, and they refuse to release them onto YouTube for some, for whatever reason. So to be able to... F- Sounds like something a big company would do. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but it makes no <laughs> sense, because yeah. Trip Tank's perfect for for the shorts on YouTube. Like, it's, it's a perfect market. Like, just throw them out there. Quit being so stingy. Like, now, what, I got to find the DVD? It was also like, I don't know, maybe it was like a show that was fairly edgy for the time, and they're like, I don't know if you want to be this edgy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it also might be the case. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, just based off your IMDb page, there's also Lev and Dead End. So how do you compare professional work to the animations you do on your own? Uh, Lev and Dead End, like in Lev, it's like an Israeli short that a buddy made and he just like used some of my music. And for Dead End, I just did voice acting. Just voice acting. Okay. But over the past year... Like last year, I, I flew out to LA to work on like a, a show called Jelly Stone. It's just, I don't think it's up anywhere. Like as far as I don't know if people know about it, but it should come out eventually one day. It's also like kind of being delayed slowly. Jelly Stone. It's basically Yogi Bear reboot kind of thing. Oh really? That's cool. Yeah. So that was like my first big time gig kind of thing. Now how how did you was get that? Interesting. How did you get? That was basically like C.H. Greenblatt liked my stuff. He like saw one of my shorts on Tumblr and was like, hey, Which I like one? that. And he like keeps a list. Which one did he see? I'm pretty sure it was the one about fucking crickets. <laughs> 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 Which I was like, damn. I'm surprised that works for like someone to like, be brought up on like a kid's show pretty much. But I'm like, I'll take it. That's funny. I've heard of- the, cr- the cricket. The crickets one's really good too. Crickets.com. I forget <laughs> what it's called, but it's hilarious. Kinky crickets. Kinky I, I, yeah. I'm still paying for the domain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a joke I can never end just because it's like, dang, I can't let it you go. You die and your kids, they inherit kinkycrickets.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And all the great comments within. Well, that that's just like you, uh, you know taking full use of use glue not lube to at gmail.com that's actually hilarious Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah yeah i still have a bunch of questions for tom and fantasia what is it it's a it's it's like i i didn't tom and fantasia basically uh, it it was just a super long storyline of them waiting in line and now they're basically taking listener questions about uh sex advice and I'm so tempted to just go like, okay, the show's canceled. <laughs> I just want to, I'm so tempted to just end it to make like the payoff not worth it at all. Just like, I don't know. I'm so, so tempted. Now, how did people submit their voices to that? Because I saw Adlam get featured in your, like someone that we know, Adlam. Newgrounds.com. Mm-hmm. Um, they basically just email me like a little voice file. Any Of anything? On, just and, sex uh, questions? Yeah, like a question you would like to ask your Tom and Fantasia on their sex advice show. Are you still doing that, or are you just going to use it as blackmail against me? 
<laughs> I mean, I am, but I think I have like enough of like there are a bunch that already exist that I haven't gotten to, so I'm like I uh, should probably not like <laughs> ask for more yet. Okay. But you it, should find the most grotesque raunchy one. Mm-hmm. And, like, have it start playing on the show and then have that be the clip that gets them canceled. Like, okay, well, I guess the show's over. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Especially like in that. this day and age, that could work. <laughs> now. I'm, like, talking about rim jobs or something. <laughs> let's go to contemporary. You've been doing animation for 18 years. Like, holy fuck. That's 186 movies on Newgrounds. That's a bunch of different series. You did the RWD. You did Lazy Writing. You did Nameless. And then you've done so much social satire that I think I think you really enjoy like poking fun at certain things like your face app, baby content on YouTube. These are all like the most recent Twitter rich <laughs> is really good and they're memorable in the way that you're you're kind of making a commentary on like how the way I see it, I don't mean to go so deep into it. For you it's probably just like a one off thought and and for me, it's like this is this is exactly what I want to see is just poking fun at people. And I s- heck yeah, no, yeah, I like making fun of like internet culture because it's I don't know. I, I feel like as I'm getting older, I'm like I feel less attached to it because it's just changing, and I'm like these guys. I don't know I just remember when like selling out wasn't a cool thing to do, and now it's like it is the cool thing to do, and I'm, I'm still processing that. You make it seem cool. I think that's what that that's what's fun. Is that if you if you're making a comment on something that's that everyone else is like latching onto for fame, you're doing it like still in your own style. Like that's that's what matters to me. It looks fun when you do it. Like if you yeah, like everyone pokes fun at Twitter, but when you do it, it's <laughs> it looks it looks like it's more <laughs> enjoyable because I'm like, thank God, Lazy Muffin came out with something else, and it's it's still just as hilarious. Like you didn't change anything <laughs> about your style. At least that's that's how I see it. Maybe that's not the greatest compliment is that for 18 years like i i still know when it's your animation like you know (laughs) no i mean i i came to terms with the fact that i'm like sort of a one-trick pony it's just it's a pony i like i'm I'm okay with that (laughs) (laughs) hell yeah but it's a pony that entertains people and that's what matters yeah you know, like like zin said like it's it's one of those oh hey there's a there's an animation i know from your time just because of the style but it, it's unique and it's hilarious and you know it's always entertaining so even if it is the same style after 18 years it's not a bad thing it's usually a good thing because it means that you found the niche that works for you and you excel at it and it brings you joy so i'm also like i don't know i'm not in love with like doing animation it's very much like a means to an end like if you look at my character's no character. I like once designed a character with a striped shirt and I was like, never again. <laughs> I'm not doing this ever again. Not worth it. <laughs> but but it, that's also a problem because I don't know, people online these days connect to like stuff and like uh, different sort of content a lot based on the design, which makes sense because people want to do cosplay and people want to do fan art and stuff like that. But I yeah. just, I, I don't have that muscle. I can work it, but... Uh, it's not one of my priorities ever when I'm like thinking about making stuff and like figure out like a cool character design. My character designs are very like to serve a purpose. I'll just I'll just put me in it and then I lose a bunch of weight and then <laughs> and then I like how you do all the voices too cuz like you said earlier you like doing everything on your own. I, I I've always wondered why you never collaborated and I think it's just more at this point I I realize it's just more fun for you to do everything on your own and be very loose with it. Whenever I do, like, get a budget to, like, I don't know, like, under the influencer, for example, where I get, like, a budget where I can hire voice actors and, like, I actually have to write a script for other people to approve, then I'm like, yeah, let's get a voice actor because I'm aware that, like, it's not always the best having, like, the same few <laughs> voices on everything. Yo t- <laughs> but it's also it's also a part of, like, improvising that I can't really do with others. I only managed to do, do it with Max for, like, your time in Fantasia, like you said. Yeah. Yo Tempero is the baby. Yo then- Tempero as the wife. Yo Tempero as the toaster. <laughs> I'm yeah. basically Eddie Murphy. I'm Eddie <laughs> Murphy-ing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what I like, like, along those lines is, like, in the Nameless series, you know, you also brought on, was it uh, was it Trina who voiced uh, Ch- uh, Chocolate Man's mom? And then you had Stamper oh, man, in there. I've changed voice actresses so often. I'm very bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I, but yeah if Stamper I'm not, did I, an incredible job. 
Oh, he was hilarious. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you had Eager Raptor on there at one point too. But it it, it was oh, cool. Yeah. It was cool hearing all those different voices finally brought into in, into that series because it kind of just made the it kind of expanded the series a little bit and and brought some some new light to it too. So it was cool hearing uh, all the different voice actors in it too. And that doesn't take anything away from yeah, what you because the voices are the voices you yeah. do are hilarious uh, in and of itself. It's honestly mostly a matter of whether or not I'm writing a script, and most of the time I'm not writing a script. I think that's like mostly what it comes down to. So generally, like all of Yotam Fantasia is just ad lib, just impromptu. Yeah, I usually have like an idea for a gag. I mean, the recent Yotam Fantasia are different because I do work along with sound bites pre existing of other people. So I kind of have to work off of that. But yeah, it's it's usually trying to figure it out as I go along and sometimes it just doesn't work sometimes I sit down to like do a recording session it's like well this isn't funny uh, better <laughs> luck next time <laughs> how long how long are your recording sessions normally like for the audio how long does that take you on average hmm I don't know I guess it depends on like whether or not like the animation is going in like a a direction that makes sense because sometimes I can like record for like I don't know thirty forty minutes and try to edit it down and be like nope this, this doesn't work like delete a chunk try to figure something else. Okay. But uh yeah I would say like an hour less maybe depends on the length I'm, I'm guessing too. Oh well, that's pretty good I mean getting together the audio and then you get to start working on the animation I would have to say though my favorite animation from you like as of now like from all of your new things doesn't even have any like voice acting in it. and it was wake up Walko. i felt when you came out with that i was i was blown away from the experimental like style oh, of it. yeah it just seemed like you were having fun making your own world building experience with Walko. who but that, that's also like this very similar kind of process i was just drawing watercolor backgrounds and i, I almost did it like scene by scene like i did one scene i'm like okay where does it get to next okay draw this background does that fit like it was a very weird process, but it's very much like a, what's the name? Stream of consciousness kind of thing. And uh, stream, like, that's weird because uh, the theme that I found from Wake of Walker that was interesting was that he would always, there would always be like a path, right? Like the tree would talk to him and the tree would be like, you want to hear me sing? And he's like, dude, fuck this. Walks into the tree, <laughs> kickflip contest. When's the kickflip contest? Everything's like, they got this really clean pacing to it. When's the kickflip contest? Gets a fucking key. Bunch of doors. Walko walks past all the fucking doors, just throws the key into the trash and just moves on with his life. And it's like, he's always doing exactly what he, like, the exact opposite of what he should be doing. And that was just... Yeah, to be honest, like, the first wake up Walko I made pretty much as I got the news that they wanted me to work on like a show in LA and I was like I don't know if I want to I know this is everyone's dream and like a really big fucking step up that you can't really get to it's very much like oh yeah you fell on that like one yeah. showrunner that actually hires people out of the blue without any like you know yeah. connections or stuff like that so I was like a lot of it is just me being like I don't wanna. <laughs> it was I. I th that's how I see it when I like watch it again. It's very much it. It, it, it is. It's an emotional animation for me. <laughs> that's and it's so subtle. It's like real. Like I. I would have yeah. never guessed it was like that emotionally. I just. It just seemed like a really cool train of thought, and knowing the background to it adds a lot more juicy detail to it. Like that's. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> that you vented and out came wake up Waco like such a such a branch off from your your usual style Waco's like just this indifferent being that walks through this world and just does whatever the fuck he wants completely opposite of where you think the direction he should go it's wild it's wild yeah it's just like all like subversion of expectation like over and over yeah. and over again if anyone wants to buy some fucking watercolor paintings from Lazy Muffin they're on they're on his website Oh dang! Yeah, they are. I think I kind of am running out of them. But you the are. fact that I make them and people buy them—that is very ex exciting to me. <laughs> My favorite one got bought. It was like this tall guy, and he's just picking up trees. <laughs> it looks fucking sweet. I like. I like how you—you so. you are like the representation of expressionism. Whatever you feel like you're feeling, you can just put it into animation or put it into whatever you're doing, and you. Or make, music. Or yeah. music, I, especially. I, I very music. much need the outlet to like 
figure things out with myself and I do it like grossly publicly. <laughs> <laughs> if if anyone didn't know any better, they think you were like some tortured soul. Maybe you are. Maybe you're just hiding. Maybe I am. It's underneath the <laughs> trench coat. Lazy muffin. What's up? <laughs> Sad little baby. <laughs> Sad little baby. <laughs> it's brilliant, man. Um, In another trench coat. I think. Now, one, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, Yo Tom, was basically your relationship with uh, Max, Hot Diggity Demon. Um, and you're no stranger to the podcast. You and Max had a a podcast that ran for a while called Weisenheimers. And that and that podcast actually made me fall in love with you guys a little bit more and made me want to watch more of your animations. What ultimately brought the idea up of you two wanting to create this podcast? And ultimately, why did you two choose each other to record with, with one another? Uh, I think, like, Max is one of the, I don't know, one of the only guys in, like, the animation sphere that I used to like talk to on a fairly regular basis on like aim and stuff like that and well, i don't know we just make jokes and we like meshed well together and i don't know eventually I bugged him enough to be like hey i want to do a podcast want to do a podcast because i don't know I've, I've been listening to podcasts since like oh six i'm very much into them i don't know how people do animations without them how they've done them in the past <laughs> and uh <laughs> It was just, it was a fun thing. We had like, uh, I remember it very fondly, like the whole recording. We also got on each other's nerves quite, <laughs> quite a lot. But, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, we had some like weird beefs. <laughs> but I don't know, we never like, we still like talk and I very much like him and I still bug him about making a podcast, but he's like, no, which is fair. I just need, I don't know, I need someone's uh, coattails to ride. <laughs> I feel like podcasts are fun because they're like a weekly thing to do with a bud. I'm sure you guys know it. It's just like it's a nice thing to have sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a nice it's a nice avenue to hop on and and chat with cool people and and hang out with your friends. Like I I always enjoy hopping on here and and chatting alongside Zen and our other host. And um, it, it's fun getting to talk to other people who have made an impact on new ground. So it's or or just in the creative aspect of things in general and just picking their brain and, and seeing like what led them to animate, what led them to make music, what led them to mm-hmm. develop this game, all this cool stuff. So I, I've always loved that aspect about, about podcast. And one of the reasons I loved Weisenheimer so much was just, it was just you and Max riffing back and forth, coming up with stuff. And you can hear the genuine enjoyment of, each other's company like that's that, i think that was one of the yeah, driving, was fun. driving points of it yeah it, it was always it was always fun listening to it and i'm, I'm kind of sad that it's it's ended because <laughs> it's it's a really good it's a really good podcast if you guys haven't listened to it make sure you do check out weisenheimers because it is a very very good podcast a warning it might not hold up as far as uh, political correctness and other things you <laughs> say that, that's us. True. just a little thing to say <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> and and there there is one thing um that I don't think maybe a lot of people know about um uh, your page on Newgrounds but you do post a lot of art mainly around the comic side of things and I'm pretty sure Zin would appreciate that but you do have a a long standing uh, comic series on Newgrounds called Joe's Adventures. How did you ad- how did you come up with Joe's Adventures? Joe's Adventures started when like I was in high school just bored in class and I would just make these comics. Yeah, it ended in 2012, it, Corey. <laughs> well, it's still and, there. Uh, it's still there. Yeah, it is still there. 12. <laughs> Joe becomes uh, a model or something, and then they expect him to shove the cereal into his pee hole. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, it's like <laughs> try, someone's trying to like make sexy cereal. <laughs> it was a fun. It, I don't know. I also I remember Joe's adventures pretty like yeah fondly because it was very much mindless and just making funny shit, and people seemed to enjoy it. And will comics know, I, will comics ever come back for you? Uh, on my Instagram, I kind of post little. I don't know if I call them comics. It's like do like comedic doodles. Sometimes it's more of a comic than like other things. But uh, yeah, I try to like make things here and there that are comic ish. Because sometimes you have an idea and you're like, I don't want to make a cartoon out of that. I also don't want to throw it away. Okay, I can just drop this quick little gag. I haven't, I haven't visited your Instagram. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It wasn't linked oh, on your new grounds. Not my fault. It wasn't linked uh, on your new grounds. I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Kick his Describe. ass. Fix that. 
Describe describe <laughs> comics that you post on Instagram. Describe what kind of ideas do you not want to animate? No, they're funny. <laughs> they're charming. They're cute. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think they're they're silly and dumb like most of my stuff. Some of them are a little sad, I guess. Some of them were a, little, a bit of a bummer. Some of them it's were a, a bit it's of a, a bummer. It's a wide range of emotions. It, it, it really seems like no medium is safe from you or your emotions. So <laughs> everyone should just watch out. Watch yeah, I'll out. destroy any sort of uh, entertainment format with my sadness. I'll show them. I'll show them. I'll show them with the next birthday song. I'll show them all. I'll teach them what life is about. What to expect from you in the future, Lazy Muffin? What do you want? What do you want in the future? Because a girl on a date eats real food. Like I, I can only imagine that that has something to do with dating. I can only imagine like everything I see from you has something to do with something that you feel either like commenting on or something that you've experienced and you just want to write a satire on it. So what, what are you going after next into in the future? I do not know. <laughs> That's what's so terrifying about being a freelance creator. I mean, I feel like I've managed to like, you know, live this life and make stuff and do freelance and, you know, save up a little money here and there. So I'm like, okay, you're better than most people. You're like in a good spot. It's it's just a super like unsteady sort of business to be in. I want to just keep making my stuff and hoping people like it and support me and keep making till I can't. Basically, that's like my latest uh, <laughs> my latest mantra. <laughs> keep making till I can't. Support his Patreon. Support support. If you'd Martin. like to, you know, no pressure. If you are able to financially. <laughs> if you if you don't support Lazy Muffin's <laughs> Patreon, he starves to death. Feed him. Feed him. Yes. Also, it is also yeah. What 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 about your Patreon? What about it? Nothing. <laughs> it's I was like I was gonna say something, but then I completely lost track. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to add Instagram to my new grounds page. <laughs> <laughs> really? What do you like? Um, do you check out new grounds still these days? What do you What do you check out these days? What do you th- um, What animators would you like to shout out? What kind of content do you enjoy? contemporary wise what content do i enjoy oh man i've had a tough year with just consuming content (laughs) i had like a breakup a year ago and i feel like a lot of my my like inner safe space is just like sitting with someone i love and watching shows so i haven't been like very much able to do that i've just been watching a shit ton of streams and youtube vids like fairly mindless stuff like watching actual content i'm still like kind of iffy about it taking a break from it it feels like yeah sort of but uh i probably don't check new grounds uh, enough yeah it's just also i've been using like my phone's internet connection for the past six months this is like via my phone this whole internet connection are you serious (laughs) so uh uh-huh yeah i've gotten used to like watching shit in 40p 480p (laughs) you gotta make out the shapes i'm just trying to make it (laughs) yo terrence i heard struggling really support the patreon i can't push this enough (laughs) my gosh well i'm i'm gonna become a patron i i definitely support your work and you are a large part of anything helps and bless your soul (laughs) yeah no no problem no problem (laughs) <laughs> just gotta you gotta support the people who who made Newgrounds such an inspiring place to be, especially when I was younger. Yeah, and I don't know, support fucking everyone who does shit on Newgrounds. Everyone who got a YouTube channel that you enjoy. <laughs> 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 I feel like Tom Folk like supports at least I don't know how many people, but it, he oh supports my God. a bunch of them. I feel like I'm just transferring like fees with him because I support Newgrounds and he supports yeah. me. <laughs> it's like a weird pyramid like pyramid scheme. Yeah. Just transferring credit yeah. card fee. I pay yeah. you, you pay me. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. He supports this podcast. I've seen him support everything from Meat Canyon to to Chutney Glaze to like all the animators. It's well, first tablet I got was from their like Christmas giveaway in like two thousand and nine or ten. Did you see last year? Remember tablet give- giveaway? I. I knew it went on, he but he gave I didn't away see, like fifty like, tablets, or... like a, a tablet a day. What, what is a it? We need fuck. to see them tax returns. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> and he's always he's always finding content, and he has the time to interact with everyone. It freaks me the fuck out, man. It really freaks me out. I don't I don't know if he's like two people. You know what I mean? Like he has a doppelganger. It wouldn't surprise me. 
<laughs> they can't be seen in the same room because you know it tears a time rift into the into the <laughs> universe. I've I've done research. Yeah, he's also yeah been leaving this for so long, just like online animation. It's it's very inspiring. It is very inspiring. What do you think about Newgrounds these days? Yo, I know you don't visit enough, but it's still it's still here. Yeah, I think it sucks that it it doesn't get the you know as much views and stuff like that as it deserves. But it seems like it also has been getting more and more attention and like more of a safe space for other creators. Like Tumblr's downfall, seen. yes. Well, for like art, oh yeah, mm-hmm. And uh, although I don't know, I always cons- consider like uh, the, do the Tumblr like crowd work with Newgrounds? Is there like infighting? Is everyone okay there? <laughs> Is everyone okay? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't keep up. <laughs> what do you mean over on Newgrounds? Are we okay from since the Tumblr falling down? No, as far as like the crowd from Tumblr is more, it's more of a sensitive little boy uh, kind of crowd. And Newgrounds is is uh, well, well not not, well, not as what's, much. What's My, wild uh, is people who discover Newgrounds due to Friday Night Funkin' or from Tumblr, like the the migrations as they call it. It, it all you see is more porn in the art portal and then which is true not, you don't get to see too many too many people's opinions like if you check out the art on the front page there's nobody that's like being really rude like you might get a shitty comment every so often but that's just normal you know so it's not so it's mostly the porn crowd that came to yes the yes yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, that, that's a yeah. good <laughs> so we gotta pay the we gotta keep the lights on somehow man <laughs> I remember nude ground. Yes. Yeah, that was supposed to be su- subscription based, right? It's not. Heck yeah. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Mind chamber left because there was no nude grounds. You know what I'm it's supposed to be his area of expertise. Yeehaw! What time is it? Yep, we're hour through. Yo tan peril. Um, I got some Patreon questions. So. Mhm. Pluff mot, which I found out today. Vo- Corey. Yes. Pluff mot is Tom fault. Tom fault backwards. Do you ever notice that? No, I have not. You just blew my mind. His name is fucking Pluffmont, and this entire he's a good game developer, and he he works with a Stepford, who's also really iconic. Oh he my god, with... it is Tom Fold backwards. So, <laughs> that's it's cr- fucking Tom that's crazy. Backwards. You blew. So, I, that just blew so, my mind. <laughs> so Pluffmont, Pluffmont has sh- some show questions for you. Uh, he says, "What's the story behind your name, your new grounds name, and your?" Uh, in real life name <laughs> so. <laughs> the story behind my real life name you Tom uh, it's probably some it's some king from the bible like a really short lived king well that my doesn't bode probably, well just like the name <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and lazy muffin I I was lazy boy at first because I really liked the movie basketball by yeah uh, the South Park basketball creators. yeah I love that <laughs> mm-hmm and I don't know, there was some reference to like a lazy boy recliner in there, and I was like, that stuck with me somehow. <laughs> yeah, he makes it. And makes then it, it was like lazy it. muffin, lazy pillow, lazy. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's pretty much it, I think. I brainstormed everything that could possibly be lazy, and I came across muffins. It just made sense. <laughs> what? Um... Oh, and muffin films. That was like one of the first like animation sites. It was like, this is cool. Like, do you guys remember muffin films? Holy it's probably still Holy up. Holy shit, is it still up? I don't, I don't remember it, it but I got to check it out. Like, as an animator, you've definitely seen a lot of different websites like that host animation content. Yeah, MuffinFilms.com is still muffinfilms. up. MuffinFilms.com. Shout out. Uh, big, big shout out, MuffinFilms.com. I don't know who's still running it, but it's still there. <laughs> Donate today. It's some lady who, like, now works for the industry and has been for, like, a while, I think. Nice. Nice. What else do I got here? I got show questions. Work for the industry. Work for the industry. Run an animation site. Albano Black Sheep today. Uh, what was your, what was your favorite year of Newgrounds? Pluff my ass as well. He's got three questions. This is the second one. I have a bed like I'm not. My memory is not great. I'm not very good at like figuring out which year what happened. But I don't know. I'm guessing like my teen years where I spent like most of my time on there. Probably like I don't know, two thousand and six, seven. I'm not sure, but uh, but I've, I I feel, it just feels like a constant as far as like me being on the internet. It's like always been there. Who okay? So who do you remember the most from like your teen years? Then like uh, let's we talk so much uh, about your content. Who, who else's content do you remember back in those days? I remember Eskimo Bob. Dang, I remember Eskimo Ed Bob. Acklin. I love him. 
one of the <laughs> one of the nicest guys. Um, can I go like my favorites? Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, his next question is, uh, who was the first friend you made on Newgrounds? So uh, this might go hand in hand. I don't remember. <laughs> I probably just don't remember because I also have like I'm not great at, like keeping track with people. So it's like. Like Max is, as I told you, is like one of the few guys that I actually talk to a bunch. Nice. Um, Max, of course, always made like great shit. I know there were some creators who always were like a notch above. Notch above. Like watching. <laughs> no, no, a notch above. Okay, a notch above. I'm like, everyone's <laughs> named Bob. It's just the easiest name for him to remember. <laughs> it's Eskimo Bob, Nacho Bob. <laughs> I remember, like, uh, what's the name of that one? Like, uh, one of the shorts that, like, the guy who made uh, the Behemoth Studio ended up making, like, Singe, something in Singe. <laughs> so, like, little super, like, dynamic action y tunes that I would, like, watch frame by frame to, like, figure out what the fuck they're doing in there. Okay, okay, okay. I just have a terrible memory. No, that's I'm fine. Like, uh, You've been I'm, through I'm, a lot. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're locked in a box making music and animation all day. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. You know, yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> you get to of my own choosing, though. Yeah. You I chose this. <laughs> I chose this. <laughs> it's the life I chose. If you're in the area, you can stop by and you can put a quarter in the bird feeder and it shoots seeds into his room. <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's how he lives. Well done, well done. Um, Brandy Buizel keeps saying camp, camp, win. Camp, camp, win. I have no clue. I'm a voice actor on a show called Camp Camp, a Rooster Teeth production thing. And I don't know. They just send me scripts and I record them. <laughs> <And I'm laughs> <laughs> keeps the lights on. <laughs> exactly. Sad news, sad news. All right. Uh, that's pretty much everything we've got. I got, to today. I got, I got one more. Th- I got one more, though. So for those who are starting out in animation, what is some advice that you can give them that could benefit them in the long run? I think as far as like the way I like made it out in the biz in quotation marks is just just make stuff, just make stuff and put it out and hope for the best. <laughs> and I, I don't know. Best. I never studied animation like beyond. I never like it's it's all just me messing around. Same with music. I'm just, whenever something becomes a something I gotta learn and study, I'm like, I don't want to do this. It just, it just feels like a chore. <laughs> All right, uh, that pretty much leaves it up. Pluffmot, by the way, he wanted to come on, talk about his game or whatever, but I don't think he's here. If anyone wants a free Steam key Ooh. for his game Blue Boy on Steam, which he collaborated with Lewis on, who you might be familiar with, Lazy Muffin. Yeah, I saw Lewis. Yeah, I've seen him several times. He's a sweetie. If you want that, he's, he's a, a sweetie, sweetie pie. pie. <laughs> he's like he's such a <laughs> <pretty> <laughs> sweetie. He is, dude. You gotta love it. Um, I have a Steam key. If you guys want it, you have to. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just gonna hold on to it. Lazy Muffin, you play any games? You play any video games? Not really. I feel like the latest game I managed to play for like a while was like Heroes Might and Magic 3. And before that, it was Diablo 2. I'm like going through some sort of uh, regression <laughs> phase. <laughs> Eventually, it's just going to be Pong. <laughs> yeah. Also, the fact that I don't have like stable internet connection, I'm like, well, I guess it kind of limits the <laughs> this type of game I can play. Must be local co-op. <laughs> you have to come over to Yo Tam's house to be able to play games with him, all the way in Israel. So, <laughs> <laughs> you must. It's, uh, but I'm down so to visit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's probably it. That's all that we got for the for the episode today. Pluff Mott's handing out keys like a madman. Yeah. Woo. Lazy Muffin, thank you so much for spending the time with us. We know you're sick. We know that it's late for you. We woke up early just for you. Definitely an iconic part of a lot of our childhoods. It's nice finding out that you are as relaxed as your animations are and that it's really just a game of getting your emotions out there and, you know, whatever you find is funny. Sit down, impromptu something for an hour, and then animate it. It's, it's, It's pretty much as easy as that. I'm a cool, chill, and relaxed type of guy, guys. 
Don't even don't, even don't threat. Even now, threat. now message him your ideas. <laughs> do not be afraid to DM Lazy Muffin. All of your cool ideas. Send him voice clips. Oh, send email him voice clips of your sex questions. It's it's that easy. It's that easy. <laughs> yeah, just email use glue instead of lube two because without two it was taken. So, <laughs> just so you know. You, was it yeah, actually use taken? Glue instead of lube, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that. how. I love that. <laughs> That's you, Scoob. No, oh, no. Thank God. you guys for having me, guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Yo, Tom. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.